Hey, it's Justin Kinoy, a DJ, business coach, and idea sharer. And in this video, I'm talking about Beat Jump. Woo! This is a feature in DJ software that has long been touted as a tool for mixing, but I use it for something completely different, and I think you should too. Beat Jump is a feature in Virtual DJ that allows users to move the current position of the playhead forward or back a specified number of beats. In other words, you can beat jump forward eight beats or jump backwards eight beats or whatever number you've set. Now, for those that are unfamiliar with this, you may be wondering, why is this necessary? And there are numerous reasons why DJs use this. One reason is to advance a section of a song that might be dragging a little bit, or maybe you miss your cue on the incoming track and so you wanna jump back 16 or eight beats to give yourself a second chance at dropping in your new song. It's kind of like going back in time, I guess. Go back to the future. Great Scott. I don't know. But for me, in a live situation, I find this kind of tedious because you'll need to change up the different pad modes of your controller or go into a different menu on the screen. And by the time you do all that, the moment's kind of gone. In reality, it's really not for me. Where I do use this, however, is at home when I'm prepping my tracks. This is such an effective way to quickly set cue points and is really foolproof in setting those cue points to easily identify the phrases of your music files. Let me show you what I'm talking about. To access Beat Jump, we need to go into these pad modes. We need to change the pad mode to Beat Jump. Now, a lot of you probably have hot cues. So you just need to click right there and then click on Beat Jump and then you're presented with whole new set of pads. And actually within this, there's nine different pages of beat jump pads, and they range from fine all the way up to 32 bars. So it's nine pages. And this is where beat jump as a preparation tool comes very much in handy. Let's take a look at this song right here and I'll show you how I use it. I'm gonna demonstrate by setting cue points manually first. We're gonna do this without using the beat jump feature. So I'm gonna set my first cue point right here. And we'll just call this, I'm not, well, okay, let's go and label it first beat, okay. And we're gonna count out the intro. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. All right, so just counted out 32 beats. So it was four sections of eight beats. And I'm gonna label this as Q.2 and we'll call this the verse. And lastly, let's go look at the outro. So we gotta do the same thing. I need to find the beginning of the outro. One, two, three, okay, so it is right there. We're gonna label that the beginning of the outro and let's also count this one out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 Boom. Now, what if this could be so much easier? Well, it can be using Beat Jump. So let's go back to the intro I set. We're at that very first beat, and I'm gonna press this pad mode, the 16 beat two times for 32 beats. So rather than counting it out now, we're just going to press these pad modes. We're gonna press it once for 16, and then another time for 32. And of course, this is what we had set earlier. We counted it out, and we are right there at the beginning without having to count it out this time, but just by pressing this button. This is also really easy when we're identifying the outro because rather than having to find the beginning of it and then counting it out, we can just go to the last beat of the song, which is obvious where it is, and then we can just back up. So maybe we think it's only an eight beat outro, but clearly it's not. And it's not 16. And it looks like we need to add one more. And so there we go. That's the beginning of the outro simply by pushing our 
8 beat back button a few times. Now one thing I didn't do earlier was identify the chorus. So what we could do is let's look for the chorus, not by scrubbing the song or scrolling through, which I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's probably somewhere in here because we've got this little break, but I want to hit these beat jump bar buttons and see where we can arrive right there. So let's hit 16 bars first, go another 16 and I'm going to do another 16 and you see where we're at right here. If I hit another 16, we've now overshot it. We actually hit to the end of that first chorus. So I'm going to go back and instead of hitting that 16 because we overshot it, let's cut that in half. I'm going to hit eight bars and you can see we arrived right at the beginning of that chorus. So I'll set a cue point there. And obviously we've been counting 32 beats. This is probably what that is again. So let's see. Here's 16, here's 32. And wouldn't you know it, we arrived right here at a beat to start our second verse. The part of your workflow with music prep is to label your tracks just like this. Beat Jump is a great tool to aid in the process. Of course, there are great benefits of this feature when we are live and in the mix, but I think those benefits are just very selective for certain DJs. However, from a preparation perspective, this really can't be beat. If you found value in this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more virtual DJ tips just like this. Thank you for watching. I'm DJ Justin Kanoya, and I'll see you next time online.